back to Earth Creations. Welcome to this late week's live stream. I'm gonna get my volume turned down. Is this working or what? How are all y'all doing today? I'm going to try to put the chat into live chat. There we go. Hey Nova. Hey Witch and Gnome. Hey Erica. Hi there. <laughs> uh, hey Pro Pool. Hey Sabea. No pants Friday. Well, I got kind of pants on, but you do you. Witchy Gnome says, happy Friday everyone, having fun finishing up some Tree of Life pendants, the witch painted the crabs, and I'm, I almost read crabs, I was like, painting crabs is pretty cool, and I'm attaching to bezel and wrapping a tree on that, right on, that is very cool, in the middle of making supper, hey Anna, okay, I'm hopeful, I'm so hopeful, that the quality of the stream like won't be all pixelated, so I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for that, hey Katrina, so, <clears throat> oh my goodness. I did actually bring in my tripod. Um, we're going to be finishing up stringing some bead necklaces and then we're going to get started sculpting. So that's the plan for today. And I've only got one more of these necklaces to string and then I'm just going to be ooh, completing them. <laughs> so. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It is a beautiful scorcher of the day, as usual, it seems. That seems to be the new normal. Oh, but man, I would enjoy a nice, gentle, thorough rain. That'd be pretty cool. Me and the garden both would enjoy that, I think. I think I'd go and just plant myself out there for a little bit. It, it is looking good for now. We'll see how it keeps going, Anna. We save up, like, I use house Wi-Fi all week. That way, during these live streams, I can put it on the space internet and use up all of our 5G data. <laughs> so, I just want y'all to know I watch buffery videos the whole rest of the week just to, to try to make it nice for y'all. <laughs> okay, so, I've been making, what did I do earlier today? I've been just, just stringing beads. Here we have some, hey zombie, how's it going? Uh, here we have some opalite and labradorite with little bronze toned seed beads and some little brassy metal beads. Haven't finished the necklace off with the chain and the clasp and stuff yet, but that was a really cute charm that I wanted to go ahead and use. And then I did these two sister pieces that are with freshwater pearls and opalite and little silver glass seed beads. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Aang. Oh no, Pro says it's supposed to be over 100 for the next 15 days, so be ready. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, we'll see how we make it through. But there is those two. Whoop. Witch and Gnome says, super excited and busy building inventory. We have a show set for the 16th, 30th, and 31st of July, and then August 6th and 7th. A few busy few weeks ahead of us. Busy for sure. Y'all will do wonderfully. And now, after those ones, I'm working on some of these that just have, like, this really pretty crescent hanging down. So this one is opalite and blue lace agate. Hey, Stella and Stone. Maddie's doing pretty good. She's upstairs, I think, reading her book. And Randy is over there moderating chat in his spot. We've just been, really, just being mumps on logs and loving it, I think. <laughs> Chugging along. Uh, this is Peridot and Opalite, which I hadn't done that color combination before, and I think I love it. So, hey, Randy. Could I steal your crimp pliers? My what? Crimp? So I'm just coming in and smush and smush and then snip. And I am using the Beadalon <clears throat> 49 strand bead stringing wire today for the core of these necklaces. There's that one. All done and ready. <laughs> oh, Anna, don't stress it. Take care of your dinner. We'll be here. 
Don't you dare risk burning your dinner. Mm -hmm. Aw, thanks, Savea. <laughs> Zombies is so happy to catch your live stream. Me too, man. It's been ages. I hope you've been doing well. Also, I made myself a little cup of coffee-flavored milk. I say that because I was using this cold brew coffee that Maddie gets, and uh, I didn't realize there wasn't a whole lot left in the bottom of the jug, and I didn't want to open up the new bottle. So it's a whole like cup of milk with like just a bloop of coffee in it. <clears throat> Ooh, right on, right, Drex. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, David, how are you doing today? So, also, let's see. Yes, zoom in time. There we go. Zombie says, I've been well. Oh, that's good to hear. Hey, Yvette says, hello, nurse. <laughs> <clears throat> We've been doing really well, zombie. We've just been kind of chugging along, rolling with the punches. Ooh, uh, Drax's mom says you need to grab yourself some Rebel Coffee from the liquor store. They are grown-up Frappuccinos. Ooh, right on. Ooh, Alita Battle Angel. I really enjoyed that movie. I've never seen any of the comics or anything like that, but... I guess it was a graphic novel or something? I don't know. I don't even pretend to know what I'm talking about, but I enjoyed the movie. David says, doing great. Glad to be here again. We're glad to have you back. So I am just threading on 10 of these little size 11 seed beads that are quite irregularly sized. I don't do a whole lot of like bead weaving, so I'm not super torn up about my beads being very, very um, evenly sized. So I just get the cheap ones. I make sure that the color's solid all the way through, like I don't want the plating, like the color to rub off. But like, probably my favorite brand is like a Dynamite. Ooh, right on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Butterfly Kisses, how are you doing today? And so I'm just pulling that on, getting my little folded over end threaded through. Mm -hmm. So we've got our crimp bead, an 18 gauge 1 8 inch jump ring from that chainmail kit I'm always linking in my tutorials. And now I'm going to start threading on, we have a hematite. And this is a 6 by 4 millimeter hematite. And then a little bronze bead. And then, whoop, no! Oh, I have to find it because that's like my last one of those. Oh no, where is it? There it is. Okay. Blow off the dog hair, it's good as new. <laughs> hey, Jenna. Ooh, Drax's mom says, uh, was looking at those seed bead assortment kits at Michael's. Do you have any, any insight as to the quality? The seed beads are great if you, like, you can kind of look at it and see whether you like the color scheme or not. I don't trust the organizers that they come in. So, like, just don't put a whole lot of faith behind the, uh, the little organizers. Um, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Because, like, the worst thing, the only bad thing about those kits, um, is when all the beads get all mixed together. <clears throat> now, also, though, it, they're a good sampler pack, especially if you get it with, like, with a coupon or something. I don't know if I'd recommend it without a coupon, but with a coupon, it can give you a taste, and then you can kind of reorder from there. 
like something that I get hung up on quite a bit when I'm trying out new things is I don't want to spend more than I sh like because the kits are not always the most economical option you know it'd be a much better price per bead if I just bought you know hanks of each of you know either vials or hanks of each of the different uh colors that I'm interested in but it's kind of nice to just try something on for size and just have a bit of it and maybe you don't use one size nearly so much as what you thought you would okay so I'm snipping the wire off right here at about halfway where it would go through <clears throat> this four by six millimeter hematite bead and that way it sits nice and clean inside there <laughs> hey me and me says but I want the dog hair Hey Trish, how are you doing today? Hey Gary. Ooh, Giselle says, hey y'all, long time. I haven't joined a live from Vaughn, right? It's been a minute. Like we're seeing a lot of old faces in here. Um, the best organization for seed beads, I think, is to just own a bead shop and have like an entire wall of pegboard that you hang the organizers on. Um but truly, I really like these things for my seed bead wall. Um, <clears throat> I also really like... Oh, where is it at? Oops. Now, this one I do not have filled up. But I'm going to risk setting it on my project. But these organizers are quite good. And I like being able to take something out and be like, okay, this is, like, I should have put the label of what the bead type, you know, like the item number and stuff, either in it or on it. But it's really nice to take out, you know, whenever I'm working on a project, be able to open the lid and work out of it. But then to be able to close them independently um, of each other. So I love these little cases. I don't know if the thing that it comes in is my favorite just because I feel like the handle I don't know I guess it's good to have handles but um but you could store them like a book on a bookcase and be able to like have like a label or something but this was gift gifted to me so I have no idea where to get more like it but this is I guess ideally how I would have most of my seed beads stored and then you can refill you know, um so like that purple that's a color that I really like to use and so say whenever I'm running out I don't keep my entire stock of that bead in this bead container I just you know kind of fill it up from you know in which case from a different like let's say if I had like one of these bins that I put just sandwich bags of the rest of what wouldn't fit into this little container I'd store it in a bin so it's kind of like functioning out of like a bulk flower bin. You might have your flower container that you're working out of and then your bulk like 50 gallon food drum that you take it. Oh, I guess that most of y'all probably don't have a 50 gallon drum of flower, but that's fine. Um, I think you get the idea. Okay. Popping back down. Let's see. Um, ooh, I store. ML says I store my seed beads in large test tubes from Amazon. I found it was most consistently sized. That is really cool. I bet that looks wicked cool in your studio as well. Hey, Pinky, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Jenny. Ooh, Eric says, I use Tic Tac containers. That's very clever. I don't need enough Tic Tacs. So I guess maybe are you able to buy just that style of container without having had to have eaten the Tic Tacs? Because I do really like crystal light containers as well, um, though I predominantly use those for chainmail rings, but I don't see why they wouldn't work for if you have a whole bunch of certain colors of seed beads. So I'm just threading on the hematite and then a little bronze size 11 glass seed bead. And then I really like using these, these necklace trays 
And there you can see it's just a really nice I love that shape that consistent six by four oval <laughs> hey Randy are you still moderating I don't know if I'm logged in. I'm not logged in under me. I need you to moderate for me, please. Will I get logged into the correct channel? Oh. There we go. <laughs> you need me to log in as you? No, I just got it sorted. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Pro, I can't show that comment because you're... <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> Ooh, powdered coffee creamer containers. That's a good idea, Droma. Oh, it's been a minute since we had uh, a <laughs> troll. Oh, I bet my virgin eyes. <laughs> oh, we just had a, a, a troll stumble through. Sounds like on the motor piece as well. At least it's cheap. And we usually do, Kelly, but sometimes, like, the, the trolls stay on top of it clearly more than I do. So, they're always finding ways around. Hey, Lynn, how's it going? Right, Pinky? Not gonna lie, times is hard. Everybody's having to up their game. Anna says, I just got out of Facebook jail. Come out and have like three little prison tats, like the teardrops under your eye from, pre from Facebook jail. There's no telling, Anna. Oh, so that's coming up. I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> right, Benny? Oh, it'd be like a, you'd have the M on your forehead like um, Majin Buu from ZBZ, the Dragon Ball Z anime. But it's the M from Meta. Or the Facebook logo. Hey, Water Dragon. I am stringing some... I'm zoomed in way too far. Okay. So I am just stringing up some necklaces. I'm making... Just some simplistic bead strung necklaces. It's a great way to give my hands a little bit of a break from wire wrapping. But I'm still making inventory. These are actually really great because other than the clasp, the uh, entire strand of the necklace doesn't have any metal on it. So it's really great for for folks who, um, you know, don't really like wearing metal. <laughs> right on, Anna. Huh. But yeah, I'm just getting the bead stringing done on this, and then I think we're going to try experimenting around with some cosplay. Which is a polymer clay that, according to what I've read and seen, because I have not used it yet, this day will be my first time using it. Um, it is a polymer clay that bakes into a flexible rubber, which I'm very excited about. Oh my goodness. Well, it's pure madness out there, so. Ooh, right on, Pinky. I'm just going to keep chugging along. No. Got it. Um, Kimmy, this is just a bead strung necklace. The wire that I'm using is bead stringing wire, which is very, very different from 
the wire that I use for wire wrapping. So, but this is the brand. I like it in the 49 strand. And then I also have some seven strand because we do have some necklaces that um, have like the beads <clears throat> have very, 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 very small holes. Because this one here is a, it's almost half a millimeter in thickness. And while that probably doesn't sound like a whole lot, I have some amber and citrine and moonstone beads that that is too thick to uh, to fit through. Then I'm just going to take one of these charms, thread it on, and string on more beads. Ooh, Cindy, drive safe. Well, I don't know. I guess it's never too late to catch a kitten. I did, Kelly. It looks absolutely decadent. I'm on a little bit of a no spend kick though, like as far as if it's not an absolute have to have it necessity, we're just focusing on using what we have in stock. So kind of cupboard soup, but for jewelry making. Fortunately, we have a pretty well stacked larder. Um, bye Anna, have a good dinner. But uh, <clears throat> we've been hoarding beads and stuff for a while, so we have quite a bit to work through but forcing myself to not buy any new materials unless it's like shipping boxes or uh i am allowing restock of beading wire but not of wire wrapping wire i want to use up what i've got <clears throat> excuse me Oh no, I'm so sorry, Kathy. Ooh, Sarah says the 49 strand is awesome for macrame. I, di I didn't even know you could do that with this. How does that work? Like, oh, do you thread beads on it and then do the tying? Right? Yeah, the, uh... And I trick myself by being like, oh, I need this. So I'll go and I'll add it to my Amazon wish list. And then that way I'm like, okay, well, I can buy it. You know, once a week we do an Amazon order. And so if it's in the front of my mind of, oh, we yeah, we still need this, um, then then I will get it. But otherwise it just lives in that wish list. But that way it makes me feel like, well, it's not that I'm not indulging. I'm just putting off the adult, the indulgence. <laughs> hey, Boca, how's it going? Witching Gnome says, that's been the goal, is to use the items we have. I was going through things and found these bezels, which got stashed, and also these cabs. Right on. Yeah, yeah, de-stashing is, is always a good idea. It goes against everything within me to just try to hoard. Um, but it's it's a good thing. Right? It has to be. <laughs> Hey, Amy, I am finishing up making a opalite and hematite and glass seed bead necklace. Um, I am using opalite in both 6mm and 4mm sizes, and I am using hematite in a 6 by 4 millimeter. and I am using size 11 glass seed beads that are in, like, a bronze tone. And I think they're dynamite brand. 
or at least dynamite brand equivalent so they're not terribly uh, consistent in size but that's fine I like it when they're a little weird no well they aren't terribly consistent they aren't wildly inconsistent either okay Um, this necklace has a base that is 14 inches, but then we do a little bit of chain in the back just because sometimes we do sell to uh, very young like kids and stuff and that way they could still wear it short and then with the option of growing into it. Um, and then also 14 inches is a really good length for if you wanted to do a wrap bracelet with just a little bit of the chain so it's just it, nice and versatile okay so for for all y'all who are interested in how we finish our, our necklaces this is where I start getting into it so I am going to finish this section with 10 seed beads we finally got them shipped which you know <laughs> finally it took me forever but uh but yeah we got your giveaway shipped off I'm so sorry for the delay Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oof, eight, nine, and... And now I'm going to thread on a crimp bead. And then I'm going to loop through my jump ring. Which this is an 18 gauge 1 8 inch jump ring from the American Chainmail Kit that we're always talking about in all our tutorials here lately. Hey Kay. I think we're doing pretty good. It's, just, it's been hot. <laughs> like really hot. And we've just been hustling. Just working the daily grind, but with joy in our hearts, so that's good. Ooh, speaking of joy in my heart, iced coffee! Dun, 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 dun. There we go. So now, I've only gotten through like a quarter of an inch of the seed beads. But I'm just gonna pinch it and pull a bit there we go and now I'm going to start wiggling this down and there is no reason why you couldn't make this like a 40 inch wrap necklace or you know, make it however long or short it makes you happy it's just a matter of making sure you cut off enough wire of the beading wire and uh, that you have enough beads and then I'm gonna crimp with the kidney bean shaped Part of the crimper and then I'm going to turn it just a bit and then I'm going to smush and then we're going to snip off that excess wire and then I just roll it between my fingers to make sure that that wire slips in. I like to keep a little bit of looseness between my beads that I could put a fingernail or two you know that way the the necklace still has some nice drape. So now from here let me put away these beads yeah, it cases it's awesome except the hot weather. Yeah, and it's I mean I kind of I miss spending time out in the garden, like and I've been having one of those days where it's like I was watching other people's garden videos, and I'm going to confess to you guys, I suck at gardening. <laughs> like I am so bad. Like the amount of energy and money and effort and everything that I put into my garden every single year, and then get like half of a blossom and rock tomato three sad peppers and like a zucchini with worms in it it's like I'm so bad at this but I love it <laughs> so I keep at it but it's also I was just like oh my god I need to do better <sighs> so it's been but also it's like a million degrees outside so I was like well I'll do better next year <laughs> but then I look at it you know through the lens of reality and be like this is actually probably one of my best gardens yet I just focused on herbs and flowers heavier thank goodness um and you know stuff so okay <laughs> okay so 
Um, oh, one more bead. Yes, Stella in Stone says, how long is the chain that you put on? I found I need to make necklaces at least 18 inches for the customers that come to my show. I also do a minimum of 18 inches with the chain, but this allows me that if I did the bead work up to 18 inches, it doesn't give me any room to make it shorter without having to bring crimp beads, crimp pliers, beading wire, etc. to the show with me. So if I do it to a 14 inch and then add two inches of chain onto each side and then a four to five inch extender chain, that's where it allows me to get full adjustment. And we're gonna do that now. So it's not just talking about it, we're actually gonna demonstrate. But I'm gonna run to the restroom and I will be right back. So um, I'm actually gonna set this here and that way y'all can see each other talk doubly so. So I am going to say, be right back. And then how do I do an emoji ah, with the heart? Okay. So I'm going to focus the camera in on, be right back, guys. <laughs> I gotta get my plants all wet. I don't know what to do. Okay, what was I getting? Oh yeah. Alright guys, so this is gonna drive some of y'all absolutely bonkers, but here we are. Actually, no, I'm gonna do something else. Okay, so these are the wires that I use from theringlord.com. How am I in top chat? Okay, I'm sorry guys, apparently I was in top chat. I am a bad person. Ah! <laughs> Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> Katrina says, um, every plant I want to keep dies. The ones I want dead flourish. Shake my head. I actually had to just, this year was a big embracing of, you know what? Go ahead and grow there. Good luck, plant. And uh, some of them died out of spite to be like, no, I'm not going to grow here. And I'm like, haha, reverse psychology. But uh, yeah, we get a lot of like just uh, bindweed and all sorts of different stuff growing in the garden. That's just a pain in the butt. Okay, so 
like in my next vlog I'll actually do a in today's episode of I didn't plant this yet here we are uh I'll take you through the garden and show you all the stuff it's like I didn't plant that there I don't know how this got here <laughs> so I've just snipped two inches um of this chain this is the 20 gauge um chain from the ring lord so kind of their medium size Ooh. Penny says, do you have plants out there for making heaps of tea varieties? I'm going to confess to you. I'm a very bad hippie. I don't like herbal tea. Like, I, I hate mint tea. Um, it's just, maybe I don't brew it right. Because I think for a long time I was really over-brewing the teas. So they were always very bitter and like, ugh, not very good. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I don't really enjoy herbal tea. So I'm growing a whole lot of mint but for feeding to the rabbits because they like it and I actually like burning mint um almost more than I like burning sage though I do have sage for that as well I grow garden sage though not white sage uh I don't know if I could get a plant of white sage I would bet it would do well here in a pot it's certainly been hot enough um <clears throat> but um basil whole bunches of basil so I grow herbs for eating more than I'd rather eat a sprig of mint than drink the tea from it <clears throat> oh my god eight days till Bristol well if y'all go to the Bristol Ren Fair be sure to pop by the Queen's College and say hey to uh everybody over there tell them that Vaughn sent you off topic but when you tumble your mail how long do you run it and what type of media if any do you use I use these they're like a cylinder with angled ends of stainless steel shot um, and I tumble for like eh, four hours usually long enough for me to forget remember forget and then remember again um, I have tumbled overnight, but honestly, I didn't see a huge difference between the four hours and the overnight if it was just for cleaning up and polishing. But if you're trying to like deburr, yeah, I'd probably go for overnight. <clears throat> okay, so here you can see it's a different colored chain, but that is where the shortest that you could hook, you could also hook here for if they wanted a 16 inch necklace. Yeah, that. Hey, Tibby, I am finishing up making a necklace, and then I think we're going to go over and try making some salt and some stuff out of cost clay. Have your neighbors started the fireworks they have and I am so upset with our neighbors and I'm not even going to get into it right now because there is nothing polite to say um, Drex says what kind of needle are you using to string I'm actually just the um, the wire itself is the needle so if you're able to see that that's a pretty oh my creepy fingers out out today <laughs> but yeah so this is the the beading material that I'm using. So no needle necessary. You know that should be enough jump rings. We'll see. Oh, you're a good pro. I'll fill your ear full of it later. Just add a spoonful of honey to the bitter tea. Yeah, that's a good point. Creepy thingy. <laughs> hey Linda, how are you doing today? So I'm just opening a ring and hooking on the clasp. Nancy says what happened with Grandma the puppy. We took her back over to the neighbor's house because I'm pretty sure that was her home. And, um... But she keeps getting out and breaking into our backyard. So I'm like, I don't know if I have a puppy. or Because it's like, 
I'm concerned because I don't want to not be nice to a puppy. Like, I don't want to not feed and water and pet and love on and hold and play with a puppy whenever it shows up in my backyard. But also, I don't know if this dog has had its shots yet. I'm very afraid of introducing, like, Parvo or something to Sam and Z. Now, granted, while they do get their shots, like, I'm not knowledgeable about this stuff. So, I'm like, you know, if they're not going to take care of their dog then I want to go ahead and start taking care of their dog, but also I don't want to accidentally steal my neighbor's pet again because that's what happened with Callie. But she was starving. She was not spayed and she had gone into heat and was <laughs> was uh, basically Tom catting around town. And it's like, you know, she, she was still a kitten herself. She wasn't even like, you know, this was, she was so young still. So I was like, F it, I'm stealing this cat. Because I had been feeding her for two weeks and she had been sleeping on my porch for two weeks. And I'm like, at this point, if they haven't come looking for their cat, she's mine now. So we went her and got her all of her shots and her spade. And she had a very nice life with us until um, she got a blood clot because her heart's too big. Literally because her heart was too big is what killed her. Um, but she will live in my heart forever because she was my baby. Um, but... <laughs> Now I'm like, I'm not ready to adopt another dog. <laughs> so I need them to step up and take care of their freaking pets already. <sighs> okay. Oh, very much Kimmy. Um, right, Kay? And I'm like very upset about it because they've started shooting off fireworks, but they aren't bringing their puppies in. They're just letting them run loose in their yard. And I'm like, this is not good. This is not good at all. And Jennifer says, is it a second-hand pet? And I don't mind taking second-hand pets. I just need them to, you know, be just a tad bit more responsible as pet owners. Would be great. Huh. Katrina says, I heard back from the ring lord about the copper color chain. Apparently there can be a variation in the dye patches, so I don't think that goldish color is staying going forward. Oh, Okay. The cut change I ordered were in normal color. Well, I'll just have to get them cut next time, because I'll pay extra. <sighs> but yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to get all worked up, but it's like, I'm very actually worked up about this. And it's, um, because, and I'm not, like, pretending like I'm a perfect pet owner, like, you know. But, Sam and Z certainly aren't loose in the front yard with the fireworks going off on this busy street. Yeah, same Kelly. So it's like, I don't know. I'm keeping my ear to the ground. Like, And Randy was really sweet last night because he's like, so are we unofficially adop adopting a dog? And I was like, I don't know, baby. Hey, Debbie, how's it going? So I'm remeasuring this one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this one's to eight on each side. So I'm still going to go ahead and do the two inches. I'm just going to cut a whole bunch of the two inches. It'll be fine. And we have one, two, three. Two, three, four, five. So I'll need ten of these. Drax's mom says, our neighbors let their chickens and rooster run around the neighborhood. Honest to goodness, I wouldn't mind it nearly so much, but we were on one of the busiest streets in our town. And, like, where our house is, like, the hill that folks have to go over, that most folks come flying over, they have a little bit of time to slow down by the time they get to in front of our house. But our neighbor's house is right at the foot of the hill. And I just, I'm very worried for their dogs because they don't keep them fenced in and they don't keep them on a leash. It's just we're a little too in town for country roaming, you know, as far as animals go. And also there's something dead in the road, usually possums raccoons or you know groundhogs but on like at least every other week there's something dead <laughs> so oh goodness yeah i don't know about that but it definitely scares me 
Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I don't mean to dump my stress on you guys, but that's just been really heavy in the front of my mind. I lost count again. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hey, Tiggy, how's it going? Ooh, oh, I love fat cats, even just extra large cats. <laughs> Sarah says, I have a 26-pound cat, not fat, just extra large, that wedges himself under the sofa because of the fireworks. My neighbor starts with them in May. Good grief. That's a lot of money to blow up, I'm just going to say. Beep boop. Me and the animals, it weighs heavy here, too. Did you see my Glass Studio video on Instagram? I think I tagged you correctly. I have not checked my Instagram today. Katrina but I will check it out I'll have to oh well thanks Kay they're in time to sling those drinks off to work Ooh, have a great day at work Drax hey Kay you're not too late oh oh very thank you so what are friends for not dumping we care well thank you guys yeah people been going ham like <laughs> Our town opened up a uh, new, like, discount liquor and smoke store, and they're selling fireworks out of the parking lot. And I'm like, honestly, this is marketing genius. <laughs> okay, so. Where'd the one that I finished go? What's even happening here? I lost, there it is, okay. <laughs> right on, Amy. America. Okay. You should set up a first aid kit, aid kit booth, that's a good idea. A nice little uh, volunteer booth for the practicing EMTs, like folks who are still working on getting their certification. <laughs> the Dragon Dancer designs. <laughs> Ooh, right on, Glenda. What kind of necklaces have you been working on? <laughs> Is that what you were wanting to do, Randy? Yeah. And then I'm going to put on the extender chain. I know that this is like riveting content, but this is the reality behind making jewelry for sale. As I'm sure a whole bunch of you know. But yeah, I think for 4th of July, instead of fireworks, I'm going to go get some soaker hoses for my poor garden. in years past I tried to have all of the soaker hoses hooked up all at once and have it go and we just don't have enough water pressure. Hey Kay, okay. we're doing pretty good. Elijah's <laughs> such a true true statement. <laughs> well now we're all grinding along together. 
but I'm thinking this year on the beds that border the garden, I can tie in the garden hose to the individual soaker hoses and just set a timer. Um, it's still more labor intensive than I would like. I would really love like an automated watering system, but this will get us by for now, I think. What am I doing? <laughs> Vaughn! <laughs> I was thinking about watering my plants. I just, again, oh my gosh, okay, we can do this. Come on, two brain cells. There we go. We did it. Yay. Hey, Tanya, how's it going? Hey, Misty. Same, Tanya. I've been hoarding them for a minute, but I'm glad to finally be using them. I'm Everything I make for, like, at least the next month is just going to be cupboard soup jewelry, just using what we have instead of ordering more supplies. So hopefully that'll be good. Dude, I don't even know, ML. Lindorf is like, I was wondering what you were doing there. Who knows? <laughs> Certainly not I. I do love this peridot with the uh, opalite, though. So there's that. Whoops. Oh, no. Kay says, I've got a band of ruthless chip chippy monks terrorizing my garden. They're one. Oh... Yeah, um, I've surrendered my grapes to the birds, but at least the leaves are still providing the shade I was hoping for. Oh my gosh, Chibi says, I was just imagining you getting yourself a backpack super soaker and guarding your yard from fireworks landing in it. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> but no, in years past, whenever I kept my rabbits in track, like, it was like the neighbor's kids had gone through and, like, shot at my rabbits because you could see those little bottle racket sticks, like, stuck into the cage. And it's like, fortunately, you know, my rabbits have, or whenever I kept them in tractors, they had, like, a little den to go in that would keep, like, the wind and apparently fireworks off. But still, it's like, oh my god, I, I hate the 4th of July. <laughs> like, ha. <sighs> I mean, it's a lot of fun, yes, yay, explosions, but also, people are terrible, <laughs> and that's fine. Like, for for every terrible person, there's, you know, ten nice people and nice neighbors not doing obnoxious crap, but, and I'm reminding myself of that. I love the combo misty. But yeah, I've been finding I have such a tendency lately to really fixate on, you know, whenever something bad is happening. And so I'm trying to remind myself of, well, yes, you know, this one bad thing happened, but how much, you know, nice happened in the neighborhood as well. So, oh, really, Savannah? Well, and that was years ago, and those neighbors have moved. We're very lucky that, for the most part, we, we get along great with our neighbors. We just don't talk to each other, and it's phenomenal. Like, there was one time that the neighbor next to us and I, like, awkwardly, like, waved at each other, but he caught me digging in my belly button. <laughs> Similarly to how I had caught the other neighbor on the other side of me digging in their belly button. But, so I know we're all caught from, cut from similar cloth. <laughs> <laughs> like I fit right in with my belly button digging hermit neighbors. Okay. 
so now I'm in the stride of it just a little bit. Hey, Glenda. Says, it has been a while since I found you online. It has. We have been posting uh, regularly. We do our shop updates on Mondays. We have new tutorials on Thursdays. And we have um, our Friday live streams. So that's kind of the schedule we've been sticking to. We were doing tutorials on Sundays as well. But just with it being kind of busy this summer, we have our niece here with us again. And uh, to make room in our schedule for... Uh, make, you know, family time and getting ready for Dragon Con Labor Day weekend, which that's what we're making all this inventory for every Friday, is just just hustling for bread. Super terrible belly buttons. <laughs> oh my gosh, Erica! Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, Nina. Says, How's it going? It's going pretty good. Just making. Making jewelry and bitching about the neighbors. <laughs> Which I'm done. I'm done bitching now. Yes, we're putting uh, chains on all the necklaces now. Um, Dragon Con is still in Atlanta, Georgia. It's Labor Day weekend. Um, and we are actually going to be, I'm so excited, we're going to be on the first floor of the America's Mart. Um, in one of the very back corners. So it should be pretty easy to find us if anybody is uh, in the area and coming on through. Freely included. No. But yeah, and then you just hook it on and you can hook it anywhere along that chain. So I'll actually demonstrate the length and diversity on these whenever we get there. Hey, Joette, how are you doing? Ah, right on. Idaho time. <laughs> Coffee. I've actually got to go ahead and finish this because otherwise I'm going to end up getting jewelry in it. Mm. Not quite done yet, but we'll get there. Ah, right on. Patty says we'll be at Dragon Con and we'll definitely come see you. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. Like, I think. If you're at, like, if you enter Dragon Con, first floor dealer's room in the America's Mart Building 3, and just go straight to the back and turn to the right, or turn to the right and go straight to the back, because there'll be rows and rows and rows of vendors. We are this very back corner of the room. So the entrance is here, or the very back corner, and we're those two booths. So I am like, whoo, freaking out, because. <laughs> We have not, I have not been making enough jewelry. <laughs> crafting, crafting noises intensify. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about it, Patty. Because in years past, we've not had 10 by 10s. We've had six foot tables. Um, and we had three six foot tables up on the third floor. Um, but they were, started channeling the, the traffic of like the foot traffic through the building to where if you wanted to go to the third floor you still had to like kind of traverse through the rest of like all the rest of the building you know floors one and two you couldn't just pop right on up or at least that's how it was described to me i never actually get to leave my booth at dragon con but um that's the full so yeah we had to go through this area now also it's just occurred to me that might have been just because they're like me and get lost real easy but however it goes i think it's going to be pretty huge to be on the first floor i don't know how to open this i'll use a different bag just because i can't figure out Beep. there we go Any floor, we usually start at the top and work our way down. Ooh, that's a good way of doing it, Patty. Right on. Well, I was I was misinformed then. And bless the bless their hearts if they were going <laughs> all the way through each time. Or was it they closed the bridge access one year? I don't remember. Hey, Anne, how's it going? Okay, I'm going to flip this around just to see 
there we go okay so i want to try on these necklaces with y'all so that you can see i didn't even put the extender chain on that one give me a sec so yeah this is this is how we do it so i just measure using the top of the spool because that is four inches and then i'm going to open that up really really am digging this opalite with blue lace agate like digging it you guys nobody checks us anymore for sure you have to come in the front door there's a line up the hill around the buildings it's insane Whew. that must have been what they were talking about then and i misunderstood it's just gross to me oh no really by the way did you know that it's actually more cooling for your body to consume hot things in the summer I did not know that. I just like the cold mouth feel. So. Bright Pro. And that's what I'm hoping for. So this is it on its shortest setting. Which. Is the 18 inch. My neck's a bit bigger than it used to be. But I actually really like how 18 inches sits on me. Personally, I like 18 and a half since I've plumped. <laughs> Just, it sits, I like that on me. Now, also, we haven't done the cosplay yet, Kelly. You can hook it anywhere up to this length. And then we can always add more chain in our booth. So that's how we do our chains for our necklaces um, and we function within the same lengths for um, our just chains that we sell with our pendants. Now the only thing is it does it does offset the clasp a little bit but I don't care <laughs> like and people keep buying stuff from us so I guess they don't care too bad either. <clears throat> and now ooh, I want to try on one of these with this big moth and the opalite and freshwater pearls so right here you can see that's all the extender chain we have and it sits roughly about there and then you we can also hook it here where the beading stops <clears throat> and i just i like to have a lot of different options for I never know how a customer is going to want one of their things. And so, ah, I love that moth too, you guys. Eee, especially with the opalite. <sighs> okay. Um, in fact, I kind of think I want to sculpt a moth this evening out of cosplay. We'll have to see. Ooh, we'll have to see. Oh, because if we do some labradorite for the body. Okay, let's dig through some stuff. But yeah, so that's that's how our chains work. Right on, Erica. It's, I don't know, I think a lot of folks, like, I'm starting to run into some ladies my age and maybe, like, a, within a decade older are, like, starting to be like, oh, well, we need to act our age. And I'm like, excuse me? I don't think I'm capable. Um, and so it's like just wearing kind of like, I don't know, just like the fashion is sh like they're shifting their fashion, you know, it, like, and I'm not ready for that. It's like, I'm not going to not wear my hair like up and long just because like, I'm going to be 80 and be wearing like fake lashes in a messy bun with a push-up bra. Like maybe not on the daily, but when I'm feeling wild, uh, you bet your butt cheeks I'm going to be dressing up full glam uh, with no regard whatsoever to age that is just a number. Now it's okay for tastes to change though. I'm not saying that you have to stay like I used to wear a whole lot of tutus and honestly I got tired of getting stuck in car doors a whole lot. Um, so my tutu phase is a little behind me I think but it doesn't mean it's not going to come around again full circle. So I think I might use this one. Right, Misty? She says, yeah, I never understood the, oh, you have hit 50 or 60, now you have to have short hair. 
it's I think for some ladies it's um I, I know my mom does it because she feels like it's easier to style and she gets more volume uh because in our family like your hair doesn't just thin it just leaves <laughs> it, it goes to get milk and doesn't come back um so uh a lot of the women in my family like my sisters wear their hair shorter um so that it can look more voluminous voluminous it looks bigger hair go poof mm, okay so these are two tabs that i'm gonna try Ooh, i'm gonna try using some of these trays to do like a little sculpture in maybe okay we'll see <laughs> nice pinky <laughs> right Tonya age is a state of mind okay so I'm gonna start carrying my stuff over there yes okay I'll be right back See these mushrooms just hanging, just hanging out. All about before set up and oh no, I'm gonna have to set the camera down, you guys. So there we go. Oop. All right. I just figured y'all would rather me do this now than wait until the tripod's farting in your ear. Okay. I'm gonna flip it back around. Kitty breath. Okay. There we go. First things first, I've got this like super long, I spliced two straws together <laughs> to make it to where I don't have to pick up my 64 ounce water bottle. Uh oh. oh there we go. I can just come in and drink. I have this like super long hose. <laughs> okay, let's put that up there. And I know I said I was done fooling about with the tripod, but here we are. And I'm fooling about with it again. There we go. There's the tripod. Oh, Joette. Ooh, right on, Chibi. Okay. Oh, everything is magnetized. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing is, and one of y'all was telling me about, um, with you can, Mary Hart was telling me that you can use cost clay in conjunction with other polymer clays, which I think is very, very cool. So, Ooh, oh, I don't know. Um, probably vintage bronze. I'm going to go ahead and finish off each of these little mushrooms. Like, guys, check this out. They are so cute. I cannot handle it. <laughs> and then also, I bet I can show you them glowing. Just getting it charged up. They've been over here in this dark corner all day. I need to find my black light. So 
to check it and like the tip of the crystal conveys the glow as well. And the spots on top glow also that are just not glowing bright enough for the uh, camera to pick up on right now. But it is cool, you guys. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to be using the, I think the smallest. Hey baby, what's up? <gasps> hey, sorry, the oh, pliers are stuck. There we go. Can I can I use that? Can you turn the lights off up high? Okay, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to all of our little shroomies. So yeah, you can really see what. I'm just turn off the light for a thing. Yeah. Like. And it's got this orange glow as well there on the edges from this fluorescent acrylic paint. So there's that one. But the coolest part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happening. right? No, but turn your light off. The glow from the, the clay travels through to the... Yeah. I was shining it up the, you gotta shine up the skirt to get it to glow a little bit. There we go. That is so neat though. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. This one is probably my favorite cause he chunky. He do the chunk. <laughs> um, we're going to be selling them at Dragon Con. And then anything that's left over may make it to our shop. But I also would like to make some ooh, just for in the shop as well. <laughs> They're pretty durable. Maybe after dragon. Yeah, and that's what I mean is after dragon. But oh, that, I'm going to keep this one, I think, because he's so fat. Oh, boom. <laughs> Could you turn the light back on for me? Well, you got a few others. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, no light yet. And then we have this one. That's a nice, so yeah, it really makes a big difference to charge it up. But I love getting to do the details. So pretty. And then this one over here. Now my hopes is that I can make these, because these ones I made out of glow-in-the-dark Sculpey. Um, and red like pomegranate and glow in the dark and then painted with some orange um but i'm really hoping that i can use cost clay's glow clay but i don't have any of that yet and then there's that one i really like the shape on this one this little glow butt and then this is our last one whoops this one's pretty good too, but I'm gonna make some more, some more chunky boys. <laughs> like I just love it. I actually really like the cap style on this one, how it like kind of tilts up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, time to sculpt more. Hey Randy, can I ask you to help me with another thing? What's that? Could you pick me out like five crystals from the drawer that says chain? Thank you, Mama. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my phone in. Now, Pro asks, oh, Mushroom Fairy Dancers, that's beautiful, Misty. Pro asks, What's the difference between poly clay and cost clay? So with polymer clay, these little tips here and stuff, polymer clay will get brittle and break. Like stuff will break off. Ooh. Thank you, honey. I get that one on my toes. <laughs> Whereas cost clay 
bakes down to like a flexible rubber um and it's just game changing is what i've read and watched i cannot wait to actually try it so these are the five that i'm going to make some non-glowing mushrooms just out of the cost clay to see like how that goes hey liz how's it going Ooh, it would chibi so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to finish making the loops on these just so that um we can put bales on them and make them into necklaces and they'll be done. And I'm going to need to get the oven preheating to 275, which is amazing that it bakes at the same temperature as Sculpey. So I'm like so happy about that. Because I still have all of this polymer clay that if things go, like, I don't know. I'm never going to completely phase out polymer clay. Um, I Or rather, I should say, I don't have any plans. Yes, cost clay. The fantastic flexible plastic. And honestly, their packaging makes it look like it belongs by in like the kids crafting section but if y'all go to their website or any of their social media or anything like that like this is pro level sculpting stuff that i've of what i've seen people do with it so i'm very eager to um to tackle it because i had gotten really discouraged with making my fairy houses and you know um different sculptures and stuff because over here I've actually got, you can see, I'll just move the tripod because I can't pick her up because she breaks. But you can see this little um, goddess jar I had sculpted um, and all of her hair, everything just breaks off and it makes me so sad. And she has amethyst for eyes and the background is all blue translucent clay with rainbow fluorite in it and she got amethyst for boobies and like just... But yeah, it's, she, she keeps breaking, and so I haven't made any more sculpture pieces like that, even though I enjoyed it so much, because I don't want it to, um, you know, I don't want to just put the work in just for it to break. So, so that's why I'm really, really hopeful for the uh, cost clay. Sorry, fooling about with the tripod. There we go. Oh, well, thanks, Tanya. And I really love her, and I, I'd like to, you know, make sister pieces to that one, but we'll see. And I'm also, I really, <laughs> that was the tripod, I promise. Um, I really like that with polymer clay, I didn't have to paint the base red. I could just add an accent color to it. Um, and so I'd like to see if I can get more colors of the cost clay but then there's also like the pearl effects and different things that I really like using with polymer clay so I don't have any intentions of completely phasing out using Sculpey but this cost clay is more affordable as well I mean more affordable at least than buying polymer clay from like Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby uh, without a coupon Hey, welcome back, Witch and Gnome. <laughs> Misty says, can you use alcohol ink with the cost clay? I don't know. Today will literally be my very first time fooling about with it. But yeah, very cool. So let me set these off to the side so that we can finish them into necklaces later. Ooh, right on. Okay, 
going to scoop some stuff out of the way. to work on can you mix together before sculpting I'm pretty sure yeah you can mix colors ah. right on so what I did was I purchased this is dull just cost clay dull what specific color is it fairy light do not microwave keep away from open flame do not exceed baking temperature cool bake for 30 minutes so let's try this out. Yeah, I had used Primo for it, and it's still, it's, it's just, ooh, CERN it. You can make functional shoelaces. Holy smokes. So I'm going to open this up. I tried to get as close of a color <clears throat> as what... I wanted to end up with and I specifically bought these for the mushrooms this um, fairy light and the red I got specifically for just doing mushrooms um, and then I got this medium fern for doing more detailed sculptures so I guess this one was the doll the red is deco and the gray is sculpt So, but yeah, ounce per ounce, this is about, this is a little bit cheaper. I think it was $16 for a pound, or like 15 I don't know. Ooh, it's nice and soft. Right on, Melody. I don't know, maybe I was using a lot more Sculpey 3 than I thought, but uh, we'll have to, it was, gosh, six or seven years ago that I sculpted that piece. Mmm, right on. Yeah, it's hard to beat the price of the cheapo clays. Okay, so it's a little sticky, which might actually be nice in getting things to actually adhere to each other. I'm sure you can use water to uh, repel it. So I'm going to pull off just a little bit. This is actually quite soft. Oh no, what happened to Man Beast? Well, thanks for hanging out with us, Yvette. I hope Man Beast is okay. So yeah, I'm just stuffing a, uh, a crystal up in the... Uh... Ooh, right on, Chibi. So I'm going to get this positioned on here and then set it off to the side and let it kind of calm down a little bit um, to see if it will cool. Could probably do with some clean water, but I'm just going to use what I've got. But yeah, it's quite warm, almost sculpty three levels of sticky and soft. Which is okay, I'm just making observations. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna set that on. I'm gonna make it like a little dirty paper towel pillow to sit on off to the side. And then I'm gonna do another chunk. Oh goodness, waiting for MRI. Bye, Yvette. Hey Al, how's it going? Oh, Robin, that's awesome. She says, hi, Vaughn. Hi, Robin. I got first order this week, and the stones are awesome. Yes, I'm so glad you like them. Wee! <laughs> oh, Misty. She says, I'm opening my package right now of cabs, too. I carefully unwrap, ogle, and then rewrap for safety until use. Oh, that's so cool. Y'all make me so happy. Okay. So, yep, just pressing the crystal into place. I'm actually going to taper this one down a little bit more. And we can just shape that a little bit, setting it off to the side to cool. And then this one, let's make a chunky boy. Oh, no, I, this is not sponsored or anything. Randy and I bought the cost clay. Um, but I just, I wanted to try it out. So <laughs> I'm going to make another little, little round guy. I think I'm going to need more clay than that, though. Um, Robin says, do you sell tabs that are fully drilled? Not currently. But we have been having a lot of requests of that, so I may have to figure out how to do it. That's a good size for a chunky boy. Um, no, I go ahead and bake them. We're baking at such low temperatures. I've never had a crystal burst on me. Now, if I had a crystal that was particularly, um, like if it did have little pockets of water or something like that in there, um, yeah, I would remove it and then glue it back in later. Um, but I end up sculpting down and around enough that uh, I've never had any problems. But no reason why you can't remove it and try to glue it back in. And so I'm going to give it just a little bit of like a turnip shape. I think they do use a drill to drill things for the cabochons. It's just a matter of, I don't know what the correct kind of bit to use is. Um, but I think, like, I imagine if I were doing it, I would want a drill press and a, like, dish with a um, filter on the in tank of a hose. And then, like, a little, like, probably just aquarium pump that pulls the water in and like recirculates to put water on the bit that way you're not getting that stone or glass dust up in the air yes cost clay gets baked at 275 for 30 minutes per quarter inch or six millimeters like like prongs Al. yeah there are a couple of really cool ways to wrap with prongs and I was specifically gonna do just mushrooms with these two colors to really get to see how much like okay well we spent this much on materials and we got we made this many 
of this design out of it and that helps us to figure out the um the pricing of how we should the material pricing at least for pieces like this For drilling glass, make sure it's done underwater. Doing by hand with a flex shaft is generally safer than a drill press. Ah, a drill press can catch and spin glass piece right on. So then I, I do think still having the pump water set up would really be helpful. Ooh, Glenda says I use a drill to polish up my pieces. They have one at Hobby Lobby. I work there now. Ooh, right on. I feel like I am sufficient at prong settings, but not particularly uh, proud of the results I get. So not gonna lie, I'm a little bummed that these don't glow in the dark, but you want to use a diamond bit, I always either use the round bit or a core bit. Core bits will give you a bigger hole but are more likely to catch and stuff. Okay, a round bit. Is that where the tip's a, a ball? Or is it where it's like round, like a, like a cylinder? So I'm going to set that one down. Definitely makes my hands feel clay-y. Ooh, right on what you know. Bye, Tonya. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, so I'm going to use a ball stylus tool. Honestly, really like having the... Um, crystal there just to have something to hold on to. Yeah, just stippling to get stippling, I guess. <gasps> what? Liquid clay. I did not know that, Penny. <laughs> ah, and I'm going to no spend. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> it's okay. I'll figure it out. I'll be fine. And so then I'm just coming through and doing slightly different depths of just like grow lines. Now, also, I'm thinking there's probably no reason at all why we can't just attach a crystal directly to, like, the mushroom cap portion to make it look like the crystal is the mushroom stem. That would be really cool. But this is what we're doing for now. So I want to get some little pox marks that are a little deeper. And then I'm going to go back through with the larger ball head again. Ooh, the liquid glows would be so neat for accenting and stuff. Yeah, for reals. Oh, fitting in with some relaxation is always wise. Kind of padding out again. And now, let's see. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to scrape just a little. Actually, quite a bit because we do have five of them. of just 
pesto. Ooh, though actually, since I'm over here now. Hey, Julia, how's it going? Let's set that off to the side. I think. Is this my. Nope, that's sunset gold. Is this my. Yeah, it's antique silver. I've got like just a brown in Prolex pigments. Like, it's not metallic, it's not. I guess that's my carbon black, isn't it? Hey, Bev. Hey, Hawk. So, just a nylon bristle brush. And I'm just catching some of these details coming through on the high points. Now, this is particularly sticky. Like, I'm used to working with Sculpey Primo. And the doll is, like, the doll clay is really sticky. Now, it's also very warm in here today. <laughs> oh, no! Julius is good, except I need, need a knee replacement. Boof. I hope you're all right. Like, getting bionic knees can really make a big difference, but I hope everything goes smoothly. Surgery absolutely terrifies me, so good luck. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to use just a little of that carbon black. Now, I have, I've had had, folks have asked me in the past, um, why I don't just use, like, just eyeshadow and stuff for tinting and adding texture and stuff to polymer clay and I've found that while it does look really cool initially the eyeshadows don't always um stay color fast as a piece ages like even if you seal it in and stuff through uv deterioration and just things like that it doesn't always um doesn't always stay looking the same color or even the same metallic or iridescence that it originally was. So I'm doing just a little bit of up here as well because this is the part that's going to go under the little um, the little skirt. Like it's not the cap and it's not the gills, it's not the stem, it's the skirt. Like that's not what it's actually called but I think you get me. And so once we have all of that on there, I'm actually going to pull and twist just a bit. Just like that. And then I've got this tile over here that Yeah, I'm just going to set it on there. Oop. And then we will bake these. And now I'm going to work on sculpting the next one. Doing a little bit more detail. Woo! It will be done robotically. Good for 30 years. That is so cool. Chibi says surgery terrifies me too, which is why I haven't done the ones for my carpal tunnel syndrome, though I have to have one for my ankle. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, it, well, it's okay to, some projects, are, it's not their time. Like, so don't beat yourself up about it, but also don't deny yourself the absolute, you know, 
exquisite joy of getting to work on a project that inspires you. So maybe take a day or an afternoon or even just an hour to uh, work on your ends. Ooh, <laughs> Nova says, if I wanted to order a creature from the deep from you, how do I do that? Um, we, we'd have them up on our website and uh, currently we don't have any and I haven't made any. <laughs> But I really want to, and they've got, like, glow-in-the-dark eyes and everything. But yeah, so you guys get the idea on the mushrooms. Now I'm going to put the cat back on this. I was going to work on a moth, too. I always, even after all this time, bite off way more than I can chew. Consistently, crafting-wise. And, I mean, I'm not mad, because, I mean, I have fun with it. But, um, oof. Okay. So I'm going to try some of this medium firm. Because I think this is going to be a very different crafting experience than with the doll clay. on wow 50 operations yeah so we had posted them on there that's what I'm gonna try making out of this real quick now in the past when I had sculpted those I had used a colored like a black clay I think it was either black or like black mixed with green um, and then added on a little bit of like a pearlex pigment whereas I'm going to have to just paint it since it's this gray color, but we might be able to work with that gray color. So also I'm going to take an opportunity for some shameless self-promotion. Um, if anybody is interested in coming and hanging out in our craft along after party, um, that's available to our $1 and up happy crafter club members or Patreon supporters. Um, but we're just going to be doing more of the same over there. It's a great way of helping to support the channel. But I want everybody to know that it is not required. All of our tutorials are still always free. Um, you just get bonus little bit of extra in the after parties. Um, and then... But yeah, just being here, hanging out, tickling my like buttons if you're into that. Um, is the best way like it just keep enjoying yourself is the best way to support our channel <laughs> so says i think that's just part of being a crafter biting off more than you can chew that's fair <laughs> yeah mm, if you use a bit of cloth under your piece you can avoid getting a shiny patch on your work what kind of cloth so I'm looking around and I mean I've got like paper towel but I don't know if I want to put that this is much stiffer like even after softening it up with my hands which is good that's how we're gonna get some crispy details right Liz and I will never stop biting off so much like it's just life now hey Amanda how's it going uh, good night, Debbie. Whoopsie. Ooh, a bust of Medusa. That would be the meaning. Bird is a luxury. Like, if there's ever an e an afternoon where it's like, yeah, I got it was just this fell on the ground. It's fine. <laughs> ah. Try a cornstarch. So I'm just folding and rolling. Like you never want to skimp on conditioning your clay. This is much stiffer, which is good, even after heating it up. Okay. Still has a little bit of stickiness to it. But I don't know how much of that. I don't know. It specifically says on the box not to microwave it. Oof. 
But hey, Iris, so typing's behind slow. Oh no. Thank you, baby. Okay, so I'm gonna tear off this little chunk. And this is going to be the... Okay, there we go. Are we still here? What's happening? Ember, what, what did you do to the internet? Okay. <laughs> so this is still shaping down pretty nice. I'm going to do a little bit of twisting, just enough to get some nice deep ridging. And that's a big step in getting that what other. Did I make that for? Uh, twenty minutes. I'd check it at fifteen. Fifteen. And then we just encourage this around. And I'm actually gonna stop it at about here. This is where I'm going to curve my blade and snip. And then we can come in here. And I'm actually just going to use this as a little bit of a dauber to just get a nice connection in that clay. And now I'm going to go grab a glow-in-the-dark BB. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yes! And what's more, my sphere is okay. I just come swinging my ass through is all. Oh my god, I can't believe... Y'all, this is not even... Other than some dog hair stuck in it. <laughs> it's not even messed up. That's amazing. It's got like a fingernail mark in it, but... Okay. Back up. Yeah, that was a labradorite sphere. But look at all this filth. This house is nasty. I need to clean. <laughs> okay. So we are just going to take one and two little BBs. Oh, I, I don't know, Robin. Can you hear me? She says, why am I only seeing a photo? I don't know. And so I'm just going to press in. There's one BB. Where'd the other one go? Where in the heck? <laughs> well, it's probably gone forever. Just placing in those are gonna be the little eyes. Woo. And now from here we can start taking this and <laughs> oh it, it was doing so good and now we're all That I am just going to roll out a really fine snake. Which this stuff rolls out nice. I am liking this. What is this? The medium firm? I'm so sorry, but the thing keeps freezing and crashing. Um, I don't know if you dare hear me, but we are going to go ahead and call this a little early. Um, I'm going to get my phone reset and hopefully everything will be in the after party. Um, 
keep an eye on your emails for that link, the exclusive club link to the after party um, if you guys are, are into that. And we will see you at 7.30 Central Standard Time, which is like 38 minutes from the second. <laughs> so, so does this bake? Will the BBs melt? Yes, it does bake. Oh no, and Erica goes, no, I'm so sorry. But the stream keeps like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm going to leave the phone right there though. But I'm going to grab my tablet. It was. It is not right this second. Right on. Okay. Okay made to the after party but yeah if y'all have any questions real quick but yeah i think i'm gonna let you guys go we're gonna get the phone reset okay i have decided thank you guys so much for being here and for hanging out um and we will see you in either the after party or in monday's shop update so thank you guys so much for being here and until next time happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs>